Hello everyone, we have a lot of news coming out tomorrow morning. We have GDP numbers coming out 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time tomorrow morning. And then we have the Fed giving a speech tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. So there's obviously going to be a lot of craziness coming out tomorrow. So what we can do is look at what can happen next in the market. So we're going to take a look at the S&P, the Nasdaq, the Russell, the dollar that's skyrocketing. We're going to take a look at the large tech stocks and try to piece it all together. All right. So without further ado, let's get started with the video. So personally, I think the most important thing to look at right now in the market is the continued strength out of these AI related large tech stocks, as well as the chip stocks. So we have Google here, Google and Bard, right? Microsoft, ChatGPT, right? So Google was very far overextended yesterday, which was one of the reasons why I was bullish, right? Today, we had a huge bounce. Something like this tends to have another green day moving tomorrow as well. But the most important sort of bullish level that we would need to maintain on Google. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a Fibonacci level here. And I'm going to create the Fib from yesterday's low to today's high. And it needs, in my opinion, for this to continue upwards. It needs to hold at least 130.50. So you can see that this Fib level is... The 130.50 level is basically in between the 23.6 and the 38.2% FIB. For a continued move upwards on Google, we need to maintain that little pocket. And if Google, the point is, is that if Google can continue, then this strength will permeate into the large tech stocks and the market as a whole. So right off the bat, what we're seeing is continued, regardless of how weak the market was and everything, we're seeing levels holding on these chips and on google so nvidia we're seeing some bullishness out of nvidia amd and then of course when you look at the um smh so it made new lows and bounced back up above support so that is probably like the most interesting thing that's going on right now and then it it's just tough to really short as we get um these sort of bullish reversal moves off of the lows here all right so aside from this the only other thing that we can continue to look at especially for tomorrow's news is the dollar showing a lot of strength and then we're going to take a look at the indices all right so let's go ahead and take a look at the dollar all right so clearly the dollar is showing a lot of strength it's holding breaking above the bollinger bands making new highs showing lots and lots of strength. Generally, when the dollar shows this much strength, it is very bearish for the market because the dollar has an inverse relationship to the market. If the dollar is rising, that's generally bearish for the market. So with the dollar getting, you know, starting to become really, really bullish, let's see if the strength in the dollar can continue and if this strength starts to permeate and show weakness out of the market. But... Um, the correlation hasn't been that perfect. And then, of course, we could take a look at the VIX. The VIX, yesterday I was showing how the VIX was up so high yesterday. It was very, very unlikely that the VIX would be green today. And this was basically one of the main reasons why I was bullish overnight yesterday. And um, essentially, we saw and we could clearly see the VIX is currently red. Very, very understandably so, because after the VIX generally when the vix has an over 10 percent green day especially it was up 15 percent intraday when it does that and it closes above 10 percent it is very very unlikely that the vix is going to have another green day the next day so um this was a pretty uh safe indication that the market was going to also be uh bouncing a bit but now the vix is back within the Bollinger Bands, it's no, it's not overextended anymore, right? So this gives more room for a continued move to the upside. And the theme that we've been seeing on the indices has been a slow staircasing down. That is the worst, that's the worst possible outcome that bulls would want. Um, as I've been saying, you know, over and over, I've been saying, you know, it would be the best situation for a gap down lower overnight. 
they have not been giving us that. They've instead made a staircase down, grinding the price lower and lower as we continued falling. And um, this basically allows for people to get trapped. So this is this is actually like a, a pretty long drawn out sort of situation for both bulls and bears um and yeah that's currently what's going on the spy did hold this trend line it hit 422.50 today and it held 422.29 it held the trend line and um bounced so this is clearly a huge huge hammer candle and um this is by no means strong but a lot of what is going to happen tomorrow is going to continue to depend on the large ai related chips uh chips and ch uh, tech stocks as well as what the news for gdp is going to end up happening for tomorrow but um yeah you know we could take a look at the nasdaq the nasdaq also held the trend line so we're seeing support like trying to hold we broke below the lows and ripped back up um intraday we had like a huge huge move to the upside uh, around uh, like two o'clock so that was a really really big major rip and that's the problem like they're they're making these rips occur after making a few lows so after so instead of holding support and then ripping it higher they bring it lower first and then rip it higher so then they basically just end up either break even from the original point that they broke lower or a little bit high so, so it's there's no real growth so that's why they're staircasing it down then a pop up and then they just continue staircasing it down even lower pretty pretty interesting stuff um this is uh you know once again not the time to start shorting in my opinion uh intraday tons of stuff can continue going on uh, but once again so we have that very very important support between 421 and 422 um then we have very important support at 420 the jp morgan collar at 4200 level is still it seems like it's acting as a as a magnet as well so we're gonna have to see if by the end of the week we do see this 4200 level on the spy that's what everyone is pointed at but um now that things are getting really really overextended to the downside now that so now that mentally people are basically getting very comfortable with the fact that we're going to fall lower you know maybe now is a good time to start thinking that it might not occur because that's generally right especially when the overall outlook of like a majority of people is one directional especially if you also feel like you know so now oh man all right sorry guys had some technical difficulties but my point is that when you look at the overall um social sentiment of everyone in the market when everyone collectively is just very comfortable with things being bearish and bearish and bearish i'm not saying that's the perfect opportunity to inverse but it definitely has an opportunity for big short coverings like we had earlier today we were consolidating at support for the entire for almost an hour guys we were consolidating at support on this so let's just take a look at it we were consolidating between 422 and 423 for almost an hour. And people thought it was a good time to start shorting. What did you think? Like, this was the first time we hit these lows in a very long time. And we started to consolidate. Consolidation at a level of support is bullish, especially after it makes a new low. What are you going to start? Uh, leaning short after it makes another drop you know so at points like this that is when it's very very important when you feel like oh my god i missed that short it dropped lower i missed another short it dropped even lower okay now i'm gonna short what's the point of 
basing your trades based off of your missed moves. When you do that, you end up losing money. So um, you have to look at every new situation basically with a new set of eyes and just... <sighs> It was tough. A lot of people went short here and made absolutely no sense. So, yeah, basically, we have to see now, just zooming out, we basically just have to see how GDP affects um, the market tomorrow morning. And then we're going to have to see how the Fed affects it at 4 p.m. after hours. So, until then, basically, another really, really important thing was that the IWM was the leader of the indices today, it held support. After making like this this big low, but then we're back above 175 and close to that 176.50 level where it needs to hold above. But all in all, this is wholly dependent. The entire market is teetering on the brink of disaster, basically dependent on the S&P, uh, basically dependent on the large tech stocks, namely the AI related stocks. So um yeah it's also not a really good sign that crew <laughs> let's just take a look at gold as well uh, <laughs> gold is starting to really really drop dramatically if we get another huge move to the downside i might start going long gold intra intraday um for a bit of a swing but this is starting to get really really overextended to the downside for gold and um i hate gold honestly gold is like the mo one of gold and silver are so so heavily manipulated that it's i hate i i think i hate gold and silver more than i hate netflix to be honest but um yeah so gold is really really um taking a huge hit it's important to now keep your eyes on the miners uh gdx um the different gold tradable assets on your brokerage and everything like that because now with options because after a day or two it's going to start if we have another huge drop especially if it's very far outside the bollinger bands you could start swinging something um for two weeks out the pop up words will definitely um should give at least like 10 15 percent gain so yeah just keep your eyes on gold as well all right so just quickly take a look at silver obviously didn't take as big of a hit as gold Gold is definitely going to be um, a really a potential player in the next few days. All right. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, do all that good stuff. And I will see you guys bright and early tomorrow morning. Thank you.